Hello and welcome to Jamie's Motion Graphics episode 32. Today we're doing kind of a different thing. We're making a music based composition, which means that um, we're kind of starting with a musical thingy and then we're going to build our animation based on that. It's not the best example of this kind of uh, feature, but yeah, we will do a better one later. For now, it looks like this. As usual, all of it has been made in After Effects and all of this has been made from scratch. So if you want to know how I made it, just keep watching and then I'll explain step by step how you can make it yourself. Okay, here we are in After Effects. We are going to load in our sound sample first because this is based on a sound file. We're going to um, just, yeah, I have a relatively random sound file here. Let me pick up my... Uh, earphones because I actually want to hear what it actually says. So if you just play this, it will display no sound as you can hear. But if you hit the on your numpad, the uh, either the zero or the dot, you will be able to hear it. The, ze the zero will render it out first, the dot will immediately play it. So you can hear it's a little bit of a piano piece. It's, um, it's not very spectacular. It's definitely not something that I would recommend to use for uh, something like this. I recommend that you make your own stuff, but or at least pick something that really displays the, the thing you want to make. I'm going to up this a little bit so we can see the waveform a little bit better. As you can see, waveform is over here. There you can see that, uh, well, how it actually progresses a little bit. This is only sound volume. So it doesn't really say that much. And you can do a whole lot with this. You can um, uh, go to effects. So if you create a new layer, let's uh, make a new solid here. Doesn't really matter. It's just for demonstration purposes, we're not going to use it here. You go to generate, you can, for example, make a spectrum or waveform. And let me show you the spectrum. Well, here you can see it. Uh, oh, I have to set it to the music, of course. And then you can see that it actually displays the um, uh, the different frequencies. This is high frequency, low frequency, and it displays them. You can of course set the uh, height, so make them higher. I don't know. And then you can see when the music plays what it actually does. So yeah, nice to have, but not what we're here for. Uh, the the other one that this was the spectrum. The other one is the waveform. There you go. Um, we can up the height as well. And you will see that, um, oh, if I actually set it to the music layer, then you can see that it displays just, well, the music itself. So basically this is all of the, uh, well, all of the sounds, all of the frequencies mixed together into this and you can as I said well pull this up you can also set the samples the displayed samples up which means that there are more samples in this and um, it also means that yeah you just have uh, well a higher amount of music played but uh, well I currently have about 1400 samples that's still not a whole lot it will still fluctuate quite rapidly and yes I'm doing this without music but um, yeah, you can see it's it's quite rapid. So if you want that to be slow, you would have to up this uh, this amount by quite a bit, and um, yeah, that would make it a whole lot less attractive to use. But yeah, whatever. You can use it however you want. But we are not going to do it like this. We are going to make our own animation based on this music. So it's going to change at the same times as the music changes. That's that's our basic goal here. So we're going to, uh, first of all, try to find where the, well, the keyframes in the music are. Let's, let's call them like that. So how fast the music is and when the key changes uh, are made. 
Uh, currently, yeah, I'm, I'm zooming in here, and I can actually just up the volume a little bit more, just so we can see there's something going on over here, there's something going on over here, and we can uh, we can see how that works. I'm zooming, you can uh, understand. I will play it now. I don't know how loud it is, so I'm going to um, turn it back a little, I think. Set it to plus three. Three. There you go. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we're way out of uh, thing for the first, first chord change. I don't know where we should be, but let's, um, let's just try again. So it's about here, where the first chord change happens. Oh. I, I normally use space to play, but it's yeah, somewhere over here. It might actually just be four seconds, which means that eight seconds is probably our next chord change. We'll see. Yeah, so eight seconds is our next chord change. You can see it's just uh, on the 8 seconds, so maybe they just uh, made this on the computer because it seems that this is exactly 8 seconds. Like, not even one frame over it, which is kind of amazing if you played this by hand, but hey, whatever. Uh, I did not make this, just saying. I got this from someone else. I'm still wondering what this is. I think this is just a random randomness. Yeah, so let's assume it's at four seconds. So we're going to uh, make a big change every four seconds and smaller changes every time we have one of those, uh, yeah, riddle. Uh, well, no, not riddles. Um, I don't know what you call it in, uh, in English. Like one of the little loops. So you have a number of loops and then you get the chord change and yeah. That's the amount of space that we have. We pr probably have four of them. Yeah, so it's once every second, which in this case is very, very easy. I did not know that, but yeah, otherwise I would have told you straight off, of course. But yeah, um, every second we apparently have like one of these loops. So we can do something that lasts a second, and then something else that lasts a second, and um, yeah, we're now going to have to come up with a theme. So um, let's make, well, it, it seems like, uh, yeah, a very upbeat, well, happy song. So let's make something happy, and um, that seems just, yeah, the way to do. Let's, let's call it that. It seems the way to go. Let's uh, make some kind of uh, nice fields and flowers come out or something like that. I don't know. That seems correct for this piece. Yeah. Let's uh, let's just make a, a complete square first. So we can add in some grass later, and then we're going to duplicate this put it behind and then make it blue. Blue, blue, blue. Actually, let's make it a ramp. Let's, yeah, whatever. Ramp, put it on this one and then make it go from blue. Well, this blue to white and of course yeah this is not how you do that so let's hit M delete the mask that's on this layer and there you go that's a little bit better we can also make a ramp on this top one and then make it go from green so this green to a darker version of this green let's make it like this something. I actually want to have the ramp exactly the opposite side. 
And I want it to be, of course, down. So start of ramp should be all the way. Okay, that's not what I meant. This is what I meant, I guess. I don't know where our start of ramp is currently. So it's over here. Let's just drag it down. Um, I'm not sure if it should be lighter up top or darker, so we'll have to see how both of them look. I think it needs to be darker up top. This seems better. But now it's more of a, a field, let's call it. So 700, 575. Both of them are 640, so it's a straight up uh, distribution, which is excellent. And yeah, now it looks like this. So let's uh, make some, some flowers like appear and then start to bloom and maybe we can create a tree that then reacts to the music as well. Well, grows in line with the music. So um, yeah, these two are done. This is our background. We can even, if we want to, just pre-compose them. So just to get rid of them and just pre-compose them, call it backgrounds and be done. The thing is of course you can no longer now get in between the two layers so you cannot put things behind the, the front and in front of the sky so we're going to have to draw directly on the canvas. It's not too big of a deal but yeah just warning you that that is in fact something you have to worry about. So we're going to make a new layer I guess a new solid Although shape layer wouldn't go amiss. Yeah, I guess we, we can do shape layer. And we're going to make a little flower. I'm going to make a very easy flower, just so you know. It's not going to be anything fancy. Uh, just create a little line. No, it's not a line. This is a line. So, um, yeah, this line has to come in, obviously, in the first few seconds. Um, first of all, let's set the stroke to something like 2, maybe a little bit more. We'll see. I don't know how big it's going to be, but it seems that 15 is a little bit much. This, is, this sounds about right. Let's make it green, of course. Uh, it's a little bit too bright. Okay, that's, that's a good color. Okay, so we have green now, and yeah, we want to have some kind of a flower appear, it's going to be an easy flower. Um, yeah, let's make it a little bit smaller, and let's not make it orange, because that would be horrible. Yellow could work, uh, the stroke of course needs to be addressed. Yeah, let's just make it nice primary colors. Uh, stroke of zero. And it is going to be in the middle of the, well, the thing in a moment where we're not going to worry about that for now. Um, another ellipse then. Let's make it like this. And set this, the fill to white. And then put it on here somewhere. In fact, it needs to be behind the other one. Um, so here. Uh, the thing is, I want to use the repeater on this one. So with it selected, I put a repeater on it. And that means that only this one gets copied now. The transform from the repeater, that's where it's at. So we want to address the copies as well as the, uh, the position it has to be zero, but the rotation is what we want to do. Um, we're not going to set the rotation straight up, we're going to alt click it and we're going to say uh, look at the copies and use those copies to make your thing. So this is the rotation should be 360 divided by the number of copies uh, which 
mainly means that if there's only if there are two copies, this is going to be 180. If there are going to be five copies, or well, let's say six copies, it's 60 degrees. So yeah, that seems about right. Let's uh, let's do this, and let's also make sure that our anchor point is actually in the right spot. So our current anchor point is kind of a problem. Uh, not this anchor point, I just realized, but the anchor point of this one. Because the anchor point is where it's at. So uh, that's where... Why am I still in the repeater? Get over here. Um, the anchor point is where the rotation happens. So we're going to have to address that one first. And it's in fact going to have to be outside of our um, our shape. And then we're going to position it back so that it's actually in the middle. And now you can see why this is supposed to be in the middle. And then, well, the flower petals, of course, should not be in the middle. Let's see uh, if we can get this expression to work the way it's supposed to. Um, it's on ellipse 2, so that seems right. Hmm. Not sure why it's not repeating it properly. Let's, um, okay, divided by zero. Yeah, that seems right. Um, let's see, can we actually see where this problem is coming from? Uh, yeah, the expression is correct now. It's just that I don't really get why it now rotates around this point. Uh, I guess the anchor point of this guy needs to be minus 48 as well. Or something like that. Yeah, so there's that. So set your anchor point first and then the repeater will copy it most likely. Um, yeah, we're going to up the number and this is why we made an expression. Because now we can actually just up the number and it will automatically distribute them in, well, our thing. Um, what do we like? Yeah, 20 seems about right. Uh, yeah, as long as you don't do, I lo she loves me, she loves me not, this should be fine. Because otherwise you need to make it an odd number, of course. Um, I want on this one to have a little stroke of like one pixel and it shouldn't be green, it should be something slightly off white so that you can see the difference between the leaves and there you go. So if you make it like this then you can see that all of the leaves have this overlap except for the first one. So you can do that or you can fix that in two ways. You can either just uh, make this line yourself, which is fine if you just, well, if, or rather this line. If you want that, so you basically just cut out, uh, cut this leaf in half, the one that's behind here, and you place half of it in front of it. But my solution would have to be something like this. We have five of them, and then we're going to duplicate this, and rotate it, so rotate the entire thing by a little bit. Oh, that's not good. Ah, uh, now I ended up with the rotation of this, the entire layer, which is not what I wanted. So, um, let's see, we want to have the repeater rotated, I guess, or the, no, the transform could be rotated as well, by a few degrees, I don't know exactly how many, but we'll see that in a moment, I guess 15. And then we're duplicating this again. We want once again to have the transform rotated by another 15. And then again, but now it should be 45 obviously. Um, transform, so 45 and then 15 more and then we're there. Duplicate, transform, 60. So now we're there and now you can see that actually we have now 
kind of a structure in here. If you don't like the current structure, which I don't, then you should just flip around the um, the order of these things, because currently it's kind of a yeah, not a random order, but it's pretty bad. Um, this should be with the three, and then the four should be probably up top. It should be something like this. Well, not all the way up top. New. It should be something like this. So now we have uh, some leaves. So these leaves are all on top. And then it goes uh, down, down, up, up. But yeah, because we have an odd number, or sorry, an even number between them, it kind of messes it up. So we can fix that. We're not going to for now. We, uh, we made a flower. It's kind of a big flower. <laughs> it's kind of a huge flower. But it seems okay-ish. Uh, let's, yeah, let's just leave it like that. Maybe make it a little bit higher. We could do that. Um, yeah, we could just pull it up a little bit and make this one shape that's down here a little bit longer. Um, edit that point. Oh, why is it not dragging it out? Can we just add on to this or what? I don't know if it actually connected. No, it didn't connect. So I don't know how to address this shape. I kind of assumed you would be able to pick up this one and then just drag it out. Oh, you can. Okay. I had both selected, apparently. Um, maybe a little bit less. Holding shift, by the way, makes that you can only uh, draw straight lines even if you're way off with your mouse. If you're too far off it will start following it again. But it will well want to draw straight lines, which is excellent. Or rather the vertical or horizontal lines. So um stroke, we're going to up it by a little bit to like seven. Yeah, just to make it a little bit bigger. And let's add a little leaf to it because why not? So leaves are uh, kind of small and of course they need to be green again. Uh, let's see if we can actually pick this green as we can. Um, zero pixels on the stroke. Put it over here, rotate a little bit. Oh, oh wow. We're actually in a different layer. That was very unintended. And let's put the anchor points correctly. Ah, seriously? Really? Yeah, at some point I'm going to download one of those things that uh, allow you to put the anchor points in the right place by just clicking. But for now, I'm doing it by hand. So yeah, holding control makes that the movement goes a lot slower. So you might want to check that out. And now we're going to duplicate the thingy, uh, the entire layer apparently. Control D. Rotate once again and put it over there, put it a little bit higher or lower or whatever. So there we have our flower, which now is going to have to do something. And I'm thinking we listen to the music and see if we can match like the flower petals appearing uh, like one at a time, maybe. Something like that. Um, so let's start here and then hit the point. So it's four notes every time times four seconds. So if we make this 16 pedals, we can actually do that. 
And I should have thought of that beforehand because now I'm kind of screwed. So we're going to delete everything. Uh, except, oh, except for the front one and one of these layers. So um, I guess what we need is we need ellipse 2 to only have four petals. Um, repeater. So four, and then we can copy it four times. And that would make some sense at least. So duplicate, uh, yeah, and then go to the transform, rotation. Uh, so let's make the first one 45 degrees. And where did it end up? Oh, that is excellent. Because that's what I wanted, of course. <sighs> Why did it... Oh, it took the entire... Layer. Never mind. I'm just being stupid. So yeah, that's the, these are the leaves. This one is then. I don't even know what this one is. It's just a copy. Okay. So I copied the wrong thing. I wanted to copy this layer alone. I did do that, right? No, apparently not. So yeah going on. Um, so rotation 45 degrees, so that's the bottom one now. And the other two are going to lie over it. And probably, yeah, this one should be up top. So we're going to duplicate this one. Set the rotation to 22,5. And then set the rotation on the next one. So we have to duplicate it again to the last remaining one. And if you can't remember what it is, just you can you can just do plus forty five, for example. And then you have these well these pedals just immediately done. Uh, I mean, it, it just calculates what it is. So if you're like, okay, I want to have half of 45 degrees between them, just type for plus 45 divided by 2. And that will work out just fine. So it's a fine looking flower, and now we can actually match it up to the... Uh, yeah, well, to the music. That's what we're here for. And yeah, we... Uh, we normally, if we make the music ourselves, of course, we have the complete timing already down. So I have to figure it out because I didn't make it myself. But yeah, you can definitely see how it's more useful if you do have it available to you. So let's say we start off with the bottom one, which is this one. Um, hang on. Yeah, it should be the 45 degree one. That's this one. And let's make it appear when we need it. Um, how are we going to do that? We're going to do that with the scale. So the scale is going to be zero until we want it to appear. Yeah, it's very unfortunate we have no lead-in, which means that we immediately have to put it, or, well, yeah, put it on screen. Because, well, we want something to appear at 1, 2, 3, 4. I guess we don't need to do it straight away. Anyhow, we want to have it appear at 1. We can um, go to 1. Go one frame back. Yeah, I already did that and set it to 0. So now it looks like this, it's not there, and then all of a sudden it's there. We're going to do the same to with two, but then with, of course, another ellipse. And we're going to take the scale on this one. So scale, go one frame forward, hit the page up, and then set this to zero. Oh, zero. 
I keep forgetting that skill doesn't actually have a minimum value. It's kind of annoying, but yeah, I can see why they did it. It can be very useful for, well, turning around the objects that you're trying to uh, trying to create. Because if you uh, skill minus 100%, it will move left to right, and all the rotations and such will be reversed, which is kind of useful. Um, okay, let's set the rotation, sorry, not rotation, let's set the scale to 100% once again, then one frame forward, set it to 0%. And then the last one, the last one is going to be at 4 seconds. Okay, transform. We're going to say scale 100%, one frame forward, scale 0%, and that should do it. So everything should now disappear. And now we can um, we can switch them around, of course. If we don't like what we see here, then we can switch around the, um, the layers. So currently, yeah, it looks like this. And yeah, that looks fine. I mean, we can also do the uh, 90 degree one first and then have the other two plop in, but that's just a choice. There's no right solution. And we can also do them like 1, 2, 3, 4, so that it fills up in a different way. To me, this feels fine. Okay, so um, let's see what it looks like with music. Let's uh, actually go to the zero and hit the zero. It's currently rendering. So yeah, as you can see, it um, it did everything that we wanted it to do. The only thing is, I would like oh, and that's a whole lot of things we added it. I would like all of the keyframes to be forward one second. So I'm just going to, or yeah, I think just the one second is good. So I'm going to just move them forward from one second to zero seconds, which means we start off with this already in uh, in view. But we can fix that by dragging everything forward. So if we take everything and just move it forward to the one second mark, then we still have time to do something before this, um, well, this first pedal appears. We can also say the first pedal is going to appear at four seconds, but because we're designing this on music, we cannot say the first pedal starts at half a second. And I can indeed make every pedal appear separately. Uh, it would be a lot of work, but I could definitely do it. But I'm not going to for now. Maybe I'll decide something later, but um, yeah, for now, it's just going to be the way it is. So the background is going to have to move back, because we do need the background. And then the top two layers, are the leaves, uh, yeah, they kind of don't want to uh, miss out on the first few frames either. But also this one should still be here. Uh, because we still have to do something with this. So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, let's say that at half second we reach the maximum height here. So that's what we're going to uh, try to achieve. We're going to go to shape one, I believe it's called, the line. And shape one is going to be edited as well. So we're just going to edit the path straight up. So there's nothing to it. Just at zero seconds, we want this top part to be equal to the bottom part. Yeah, that seems about right. 
So what it looks like now is this. And this is before the music starts. So we can actually have a number of them, for example, number of these flowers, and all have them bloom at the same time. But yeah, they still have to grow out of somewhere, so that's why we let them grow first, and then this uh, ball-shaped thingy ellipse is going to come in afterwards. So let's see. Scale is going to be 0% over here, and then at one second it is going to be 100%. There you go. So it's still going to be in flying in the air, but that doesn't matter. And there you go. So let's uh, let's make some render preview, hitting zero on the numpad, and it's going to render everything. So yeah, that sounds fun, at least to me. So let's uh, we can actually, as I said, make multiple flowers. We can also say like yeah, every. Every single one of these flowers will have its own four chords, well, no, uh, four repetitions progression. Um, yeah, that's all up to you. That de depends on what you want to make, of course. But yeah, uh, we are currently just worrying about the music first, so how to set something to music. But yeah, the music will have to lead us into what we're going to do, which means that we're going to have to do something at 4 seconds, from 4 to 8, it has to be different from what we did here. Um, also the leaves will still have to grow onto them. Let's make them grow over here. Um, yeah, I don't care. Just forward somewhere. So both of them scale, and at one second the scale is going to be 100%, and at half a second it's going to be 0%. So currently that will look like this. Well, if I deselect it, you can actually see what's going on. So yeah, um, we have this now, and we can go on with the the rest. Um, what else can we do? Of course we can make something more with just this flower, but I'm not going to. I think I'm going to just make something else happen. Just make a second flower. That would actually be very easy to do. Just pick up the entire flower, duplicate it, drag it to the top, and then move it forward to the four second mark. Actually, more like right. Uh, come on. It's being stupid. Right here to the three second mark because we put one second into. Well, we put one second before the music started. So yeah, we're going to hit the position on all of them. And that hopefully will drag all of the positions at the same time. Um, okay, that seems right. So now we have hopefully something going on at the exact right moment. It seems that I dragged this forward a little bit. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see what that looks like. So it's going to play from the beginning. We can of course change the colors on these uh, on this second flower. One second too early. So we will have to move it over to four indeed. Um, let's 
<laughs> the dot only plays the music apparently. I think you have to do something like control dot, uh, control zero or on zero on the numpad to um, render from the point you are. Yeah, and now we get the uh, the actual piano solo in there, let's call it. So we are at 8 seconds. So yeah, you can hear there's a change at this point, which probably means we should do something different as well. So we can, for example, make a big tree grow and it gets new limbs and new flowers and things like that. So it doesn't have to be a tree, it can also be some kind of plant of course. Let's, um, let's just try to make that. I'm going to make it out of a solid because then we can... Uh, well, you don't have to deal with all of this crap basically. It's, solids are just way easier to manage and well, to me they're just better in most things except for the repeater. The repeater property is very very useful. I'm not denying that. Um, yeah, let's just start by making something that has only three of these. So yeah, I'm going to create something first and then we're going to see later whether that uh, or how we uh, we make that into the music, but currently I just want to have something to work with. And at this moment, I don't really have that. So at the eight second mark, this one is going to appear, which means that we're going to have to move this up. And make it well up until 12 seconds. It should just grow. There's really nothing else to do at this point than just to grow. So yeah, let's um, set this mask path for this moment, and then later on. So at oh. This should be at 8 seconds. And this should be at 12 seconds. Eh, come on. Let's lock up the background at least. So just picking up this one, I'm going to shift drag it. And I'm not sure where I am at the moment. Probably not that high at 12 seconds, but let's set the, 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 the height first. So this is as high as it's going to get. Probably more like over here. And then these are going to widen up a little bit. Oh, come on, what? So yeah, widen these a little bit. And let's um, edit these a, a little bit so that we have an actual, well not tree yet, but actual decent shape. Okay, um, that's good enough for now going to be very abstract so let's see what it actually sounds like and looks like and things like that and 
Yeah, are we done yet? Okay, that that was um, yeah too slow. I have to feel. Maybe if we just put it over here. Hang on, let me find out what the play from here button is. Uh, composition preview here forward. It's numpad dot yes, but I want width everything. Oh, that's this one. Yeah, um, yeah. It doesn't have one, so you don't have you have from here forward only from the audio, but not from the RAM preview. So, yeah, that's just the way it is, I guess. Maybe we can alt numpad and just, or alt zero, and just have the have the wireframe. But I don't think that actually makes a difference at all. Uh, it makes a difference. I was wrong. Just not a good difference. Yeah, this is actually better because now with the uh, thing growing in the first second, we can actually just uh, use every second from here on out to make something on so to to grow something onto it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the pen tool and just make, for example, a branch between nine and. 10 seconds. So the 9 second mark, we're going to create a branch that starts over here. No, don't make a shape layer. Don't be stupid. The reason I hate shape layers is a good reason. So, um, yeah, just make three points, pick up the middle one. Oh. No, 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 not here. So you make three points, and then at point number 10, you're just going to drag it out. I guess you can also just stand at 10. That's fine as well. And then, of course, you can make it a little bit wider or rounder or whatever you want to do with it. At times 10, we, um, we should make our tree a little bit bigger at the bottom now. Because it is growing. And of course, yeah, the reason you do it like this is because you don't have to address all these issues with the points then afterwards. And so now I still have to do that. Um, I want this to be a little bit more like, I don't know, this. So more of a, yeah, curve there. This one is fine, I guess. Although it could do with a little more curve as well. Um, you can make two points in the top here. So you can address the shape of the tree a little bit better. So for example, if I make a second one over here, I can put one over here, one over here. And then I can address the shape that, well, these two lines have a little bit more. So for example, if I wanted something like this, and then maybe I wanted these to be closer. So, so you have a little more control. It's all up to you. It's not that hard to figure out. And of course, if we want the tip to be a little, well, more of a pointy thing, then we can do that as well. So um, yeah, let's see how that grows. I'm not going to do the entire audio preview. The left side of the tree grows very rapidly, whereas the right side of the tree doesn't really grow rapidly. So I guess I um, should put this one back. 
a little bit. Now it shrinks, I think, but we'll see. No, that's fine. So yeah, we have our first branch now on our tree. And then uh, from this point to the next, we're going to put the next one on it. Um, yeah, let's just stand at 11 and just go from there. We're going to make a branch up here. So yeah, let's make two midpoints again. No. Zoom in more if you're having trouble actually locating the line at this point. And select the two middle ones and drag them out. Once again, you can uh, adjust the, well, the entire thing actually. I think uh, my tree is big enough to hold two of these branches, but I might actually want to, yeah, change that back anyway. Yeah, editing this stuff is really just tedious. Okay, that's actually not bad. If you double click a layer, then you well, you basically go to this setup where you only have the one layer selected. Come on. Oh, don't be an ass. Okay, like that and like that. Just make them a little bit of a better shape. Maybe curve this one. Mm -hmm. We can curve the branch just like in nature, man. We can curve it, no problem. This one's a little bit too straight to, uh, yeah, to be natural, but that's all good. To drag it down a little bit. Okay, that's maybe a little bit too much. If I don't know how to prevent it from doing that. Like if I misclick, I just want to go back to where I was. Well, the, the screen I was basically. But instead I have to now first click away and then reselect and then reselect the points that I want and such a hassle. So anyhow, um, second branch, it's quite a bit bigger than the first one in fact, but that's fine. Everything can be done in nature. So let's make it to 12. So actually what it looks like now is this. And yeah, that's not entirely correct of course because these points actually should have been going downwards a little bit so that yeah it actually grows from that point and not go down and then grow this is also kind of a problem with After Effects of course you have well very little control over these things because this is not where the, what this program is made for and it's fine, you can definitely work with it, but yeah, it is kind of, it does come with its own um, set of rules, and if you follow them, you should normally be fine. But yeah, not always. Okay, selecting these two, and we're going outside. Okay, that's a little bit too far. Maybe grow it upwards a little bit as well. Not too far. I made it quite big, it seems. That's not great. Put this more over there, and then. Once again, 
which is going to control the tree limbs a little bit with these just to get some kind of curve in them and then let's oh let's address this um, front part the tip I guess let's get a little point here yeah it seems fine so um yeah we can grow one more on it uh, the thing is the piano solo has started at this point so we're going to have to see what we can do with that I'm going to grow one more limb on it oh hang on maybe that's not actually a good thing first let's save because we don't want to lose all of our hard work there. Okay, um, going back to this, let's hit zero. It's going to render, and then, oh, that actually, that last branch looked terrible. So we should do one more branch and we should address this problem. Like it's coming from under here and then just dragging upwards. Yeah, that's not good. So let's see where we are. We're currently over here. And this is uh, this is where it ends up. And if we go back to 11 seconds it's actually all the way down there so it ends up just underneath the top one which is like here and yeah the other two are of course just in between them but the top one is going to end up over here Yeah, which is way higher than what it is now. Okay, and then the other two are just going to have to move in between them somewhere. So yeah, they now move up and then they, uh, wow, that's actually pretty, pretty close to where it's supposed to go. Yeah, we're going to grow one more branch. Oh yeah, we are in 13 seconds now. I thought we needed to be at 12, but we made one second of silence, let's call it, in the beginning, which is what's causing this. So that's why we're at 13 instead of 12. Um, okay. Let's uh, make a very small one this time. No, I don't want to. Yeah, okay. Keeps wanting me to change things, whereas I really don't want to do that. To remove things and such. Okay, ah, uh, come on, give me the top part. Okay, apparently we have to zoom in more. And there we are.
That's a little bit too big. I wanted it to be a little bit smaller. Maybe go a little bit more up. There you go. So um, yeah, that's our tree for now. It's of course going to be a lot different. Let's see, one, two, three, four. What happened to the bottom part there? That was fine. Okay. Let's uh, once again zero it up. I have very low settings set for my preview. You can see them over here. It's not skipping frames, but um, it is at quarter resolution. Just to speed it up, of course. I think I'm just going to continue with the one second, second increasements for now. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to ignore the melody, I guess, for now. We'll see if that comes to uh, do anything later on. We can also say, like, we're going to make the melody into something that happens in the background. By the way, I do want the sun in the sky. That seems right. We're going to just uh, insert a layer solid and just say okay make it yellow bright yellow okay cool and of course that is going to be our sun so we're going to need a little bit of a sphere there hold shift to make it round you can of course address it afterwards but yeah why would you um, then we're going to hit the P for position and just place it outside at frame, let's say, zero. And then place it at uh, frame number, well, at four seconds, let's say. We are going to position it um, over here, somewhere. Well, not there, over here. And then, of course, we can. Um, adjust these, they have handles as well, so we can get a nice flow through the sky. Yeah, um, if you line it up with the anchor point, it will actually, the anchor point's now here, and the middle is here, so if you line them up then that will become a little bit more of a sense, uh, well, sensible moving and motion path. But, uh, yeah, the only thing we need to address is that the sun is now in front of this, so we need to put that in the back. So we need to put that in the back, and it's going to be just in front of our background. Okay, uh, that is done then. So as you can see, the sun is now behind the leaves and it will just appear in the sky. And if you're not really satisfied with your sun, you can always adjust it. For example, you can feather it, which makes it more of this, which is excellent if you're trying to make a, kind of a more realistic sun. Although it's not that realistic, but hey. Let's uh, duplicate it and make it into a secondary mask. And Feather it out a little bit less, and it becomes more of a realistic sun. There you go. Wow, so pretty. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't actually matter. So, um, yeah, everything is uh, starting to appear. Then the tree comes in. This, uh, this one is also having a, some weird movement here. Where's my tree? It's over here. You can see that it's moving down quite a bit before settling, and yeah. This is why I normally 
I, I was just trying this out just live here to make these points at 11 or well at 13 at this point and then have the 12 just copy it apparently that doesn't work so what you could do is just say uh, or what you should do is just say I make them over here and then I drag them out that way the points don't move I'm not sure why the points move I just noticed that they do I'm pretty sure I didn't move them down that's why but yeah let's just uh, pick up all four of these points no path pick up all four of these push them down a bit somewhere over there and then of course now we have to also adjust the the shape of this because it's kind of messed up now. Yeah, whatever. If you did it the other way around, it would have been a little bit better. And now it's going to look like this. And it's actually way better. It's still moving a little bit. I want to address it, uh, well, that little bit of motion because on the grand scheme of things, you probably won't even notice it. So, yeah, there's um, there's your tree. Now we need to grow like the sub, well, the, the smaller branches basically. So we can, for example, do uh, one branch on each of the bigger branches uh, for every second. So four seconds later, we will have 16 more branches. That would actually be good. It's a lot of work, but yeah, that's what we're here for. But it would look a lot better, I have to feel, than making one thing at a time. So um, I'm going to go to the original one, make a bunch of points. Uh, these are going to be three points, I think. So one here. What are you talking about? I don't want to remove points. I was adding them. So three over here, and let's make three over here. Okay, go one second forward to 14. Once again, page up, page down for finding those um, exact spots, which is uh, super useful. At least most of the time it's super useful. Let's make a nice shape in your uh, your thing there. Try not to uh, change the the overall well, the overall look of your uh, of your branch. But it shouldn't be too hard to not do that. Although I just did that, it's not too hard to not do it. Okay, something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's just an animation. Kind of a perfectionist, but for those of you who have followed a few of my uh, tutorials, yeah, you can definitely see that. I uh, I tend to want to do things and uh, yeah, just keep changing them until they are near perfect. But it also takes me a long time to finish simple things because of that. And yeah, that is oh, can be such a hassle. But yeah. Sometimes it gives you better results, or most of the time it gives you better results because you're willing to just work harder on something. And that, I guess, puts you in front of everyone else, which is great. Not complaining about it. I, I just am like that. It's just the way it is. So, yeah, this is now one second later, so we, we have to do this four times. Let's make the second one. That's one, two, three, four, 
three. Four. And I'll go one second onwards to fifteen. Seems that we're um, we're just creating some new uh, branches here, and it is just a bit of tedious work, but it will result in some nice, well, shape hopefully, tree-wise. Okay, um, so that is this second, and now we need to, hang on, yeah, I did do that correctly, okay. So now we need to put up new, what are they called, uh, points in there. to leave a little more room for the third one so I'm going to do the first two close together and the third one is going to be a little bit further away because these are going to be a little bit bigger than the previous ones so the shape will become a little bit better if you do it like that so one big one okay should we be being annoying Two close together. Um, one, two, three, four. Go forward one second. Pick up your uh, your whatever this tool is called, selection tool, and then just drag it over. And you can see that um, the the yeah the, the branch is going to be more towards this point. That's why you place it. So you place those two points close together, this one and this one, and then the other one will just become a little bit, well, just a little bit better shape. It's not a huge amount, and you can address it afterwards if you're having trouble with it. Just, it will grow a little bit more naturally, especially for the bigger branches that can actually be an issue. Okay, um, yeah, the last one then. I think this is the last one. Yeah, so we uh, we are starting to get a full tree here. We still need one more second. Yes, this is okay. Just making sure that I didn't do uh, two of them at the same second. So I can make like a little branch on each of them again, but it seems they're all kind of full. Oh no, see? I didn't get all of them. Didn't get this one yet. But yeah, they all seem to be kind of full at the moment. Which means we can all always just make new big branches or well coming out from this tree they wouldn't be huge. But I can make a branch over here for example. One over here somewhere, maybe here. I don't know. We need one more though. 
So um, I think I'm going to just apply to the tree. No, no, no. I'm not going to do that. We we want to keep with the theme. That seems right. This one's just going to be a very small one or something like that. Uh, I can actually put one over here. No problem. And here it seems like a natural spot. Okay, one second on. And the last one, I made it over here. And as you can see with these last ones, I don't have the issue of the, the branch moving after you create one. So basically the movement of these points, you can see it here, uh, it happens before the branch is actually forming. And you can see that, yeah, here it's now moving and then the branch grows because I already put the exact position at the moment it starts growing. And yeah, I tried out the other way, it doesn't work like that. So um, yeah, we have this now, let's see where we are in the overall composition because we still need to grow some leaves, and maybe uh, put some flowers in the tree, I don't know what kind of, what it would be, maybe apples. So yeah, let's. Um, it, it looks fine. It's not the greatest animation for this piece of music, but yeah, it all depends on what you make. I mean, I chose to go for a garden-like theme, nature theme. You could also go for abstract shapes, which is uh, totally correct as well. Uh, it will look like pretty good, so no problem. Anyhow, um, I guess leaves would be good at this point. Uh, we're going to do that in the same way that I did it in um, in my previous tutorial where I had a tree grow. Which is, we're just going to select a color here. So our leaf color, we can change it later if we don't agree with it. But um, yeah, let's just draw a leaf. Find our, um, our point here. Because this point is kind of important. Going to make a simple leaf, just it's going to be this shape. And we will see now that if we hit anchor points, that's the S, the A for anchor point. The anchor point is almost exactly in the place where it needs to be. I'm going to change it a little bit. This one. This one. Yeah, obviously I don't want this ugly shape leaf, but a little bit of a rounded tip would be nice. Make it more of a shape, I guess. I don't know, you can you can make your own leaf. You can even replicate a leaf that you uh, see somewhere else and that you like. Yeah, let's uh, let's add a few more details to it. Let's make it more of an oak's leaf, something like that. So yeah, I'm just going to maneuver these into position before creating the next 
few. So I don't have enough of them yet. Um, yeah, these ones need to be vertical as well. Or, well, not actual vertical, but near vertical. Okay, um, let's put in between here every time and over here as well. And now we're going to move all of those. Oh, at least I know now how to put it back, so that's great. Come on. Come on, just drop it in there. That's not where I want it at. There you go. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, we're going to draw all of these in until we have the shape that we want. So that's this. And then like this, and then like this. And now we have to kind of adjust it a little bit so that it looks more like the way it's supposed to look. I guess we can do it like this. And then move the entire leaf downwards to match up with the anchor point again. Because that was our main goal. Okay. Yeah, I should put some more in here, now that we're creating detail, I should just really create some detail. Make it somewhat correct at least. Something like that. Okay, it's not the greatest leaf I've ever made, but hey, it is one. Can't really say that it's bad at this point. So, let's make a little bit of a stem on it. Because why not? Okay, um, actually, let's make one more point so we can actually just make it like this and actually give it some width, which is better. Okay. So um, now that we have this, we can actually, uh, the, the stem is way too small, but yeah. Yeah, let's just make it a little bit wider. We can uh, now address the anchor point situation. Because the anchor point is where it's going to grow from. So we need to make sure that that is in the correct position. And as you can see, it's pretty close. So hold control if you want to be better at positioning. Well, uh, it, it just slows down the change of these um, counters, I guess they are. I don't know what to call them otherwise. So this is now our leaf. And we're going to grow our leaf over, let's say, one second, that seems about right with our timing currently. So, pre-compose this. Just layer pre-compose with this one selected. It's called it leaf. That's not how you write leaf. Oh, and that is something I did wrong. I have to do it again. Pre-compose. Come on. Leaf. Move all attributes. And then in that new one, we're going to set the time to zero, say 
scale is zero, and then at one second, say scale is 100. Oh. Scale is 100. Okay, so now it will grow from that point, so from the anchor point, grow into existence. The advantage of this is that if we want to change the animation, we can just do it for all of them at the same time. And of course the disadvantage is that now we can't change it as easily. But yeah, well, don't really mind that. Um, we're going to go to where we are, where we left off, which is I think 13 or so seconds. No, it's actually way further. Oh. Did I accidentally move everyone? No. Nope. We're just that far in at the moment. Um, yeah, so we grow, grow, grow. All of the side branches grow. And I guess we're over here now. 23 seconds. Actually, 22. Yeah, 22. That's where we are. Okay, so this uh, leaf is going to come in and it's going to start at 23 sec 22 seconds. It's going to start growing. I don't know why I didn't just cut this layer, but hey, we're not, now we're there. Um, this is even the wrong one, so... Yeah, that was kind of messy. I don't know where I'm supposed to go with this, so... Let's see. I guess 8 seconds would be the correct time. Yeah, I completely messed that one up. Uh, so at 8 seconds this one starts growing and that seems about right. And we are going to 22 seconds. And if everything is right, no, it's not. Okay. So we're going to 16 seconds then. I really have no clue whether that was actually where I was. But apparently it is, and that is just what it is. So this one has to be moved, I just realized, because it has an animation on it. And, well, we can go to, well, to this and then um, go one second on and make the next one. But we're going to make multiple leaves just appear at the same time because we have a lot of leaves to place, uh, assuming that we want to fill the tree. So I'm going to make, let's say, four leaves at the same time. Hit all of the positions, and then... Oh, that's not what I intended to do. I intended to click somewhere else, so I can address them one by one. I'm going to move forward here, and move the positions, or the, the leaves into position. And scale them and rotate them so that they actually fit where they where I put them. So rotates. Um, why is it so far off? Okay, the thing was we placed this into the middle of the composition, but apparently we need to position this into the middle of the composition as well. So. That's uh, 640360. Now we are in the middle of the composition and now it should all work. So yeah, one of the advantages of course being that um, 
we only have to address that once, and now it's done for all of the leaves. Okay, let's make this into some, something beautiful. I don't know where this angle came from, but it's going to be over here now. And then scale. So this scale will multiply with the other scale. Yep. Which means that um, we only have to, well, do the, the animation once and then the scale will just multiply with this scale. So this is now the maximum size instead of the other one. And it doesn't mess with our, uh, with our animation at all. Scale. Not actually sure if I attached it, but now it is. So let's uh, put up the next one. Rotation. Scale. Well, that's a little bit too too small Need to have some decent sized leaves. And the last one. I don't know what happened there. Apparently I double clicked or something. But yeah, that's the way it goes. So attach it to this. Uh, make some rotation if you want to. Scale it. Okay, let me um, explain what I'm going to do now. I'm going to move one second further, put four more leaves in, move one second further, put four more leaves in, and so on. So um, yeah, that will take a while. I'm actually going to do probably more than four each second because I can definitely place like 32 leaves on it, which means I should pick eight. But yeah, the, uh, this is going to just be a very much work and it's going to be very boring and you're not going to see me do anything. So yeah, let's just fast forward that. Okay, so we're done with all the leaves now, and um, well, there are only 32, you can definitely make more of them. And uh, yeah, since we did all of the, the animation beforehand, you can, uh, you can just make new ones by just moving them forward in time and, uh, well, applying them at the right moment. So if I drag these forward one second, then they will just belong to the next one. I don't have to edit anything else. It's just all about, well, the the positioning and the timing and that's all that matters. So at this point we're kind of done. I don't know where we are in the music. So um, hang on, if I close everything and then go to my um, oh, to my thingy here. Let's, uh, let's close this one as well. And I pull open the, uh, the, 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 the waveform as it's called, you can see that we still have quite a long way to go if we want to fill the entire thing. Because currently we're up to this point, or just about this point. We still have this much time and we can do something else if we want to. Of course we can uh, do, well, a new plant or something like that. But we can also just say, well, demonstrated the principle, it's good enough. and. Uh, just make something else. Uh, I haven't really decided yet, so let's just see what it looks like for now. Oh, that's the wrong key. Okay, so I have no clue what I just did, but that's all fine. So we're going to just hit the zero and see if we can actually see what's going on. So uh, we added the sun, we added the leaves, and hopefully everything will uh, look nice.
Okay, so um, all of the leaves, like all of them, have to be moved one second. And that is because I currently have just all of this comes in and then the chord change doesn't happen until second 17, which means that that is where we need to go. So we need to come in after the chord change and I don't know why this happened, so I must have mistimed something else as well because there were four steps on the, on the tree. So from 13 onwards, at 13 we have this, we have all four of the big uh, branches and then we should have four of these and it's two that's three and that's four so I guess I just mistimed the leaves which is actually good news because if I mistimed everything that would not be good so I'm redoing the render here and we will watch it once again from the beginning just to see if everything is okay mm -hmm. It seems that we're getting a little bit out of sync with the animation because, well, uh, we took four seconds as, as our main thing, but it seems that it's not exactly four seconds. So it seems that um, the, the timing is a little bit off, uh, maybe because he, uh, he did record his life and he just didn't keep the right speed. But it is noticeable in our um, in our animation, which is kind of a problem, because yeah, if he changes, uh, well, if he changes step, then or rhythm, then we need to do that as well, because otherwise, as I said, it is going to be noticeable, and we don't want that. So. I'm not actually sure how I can check that because obviously it's very hard to check in the waveform where the actual rhythm is but it seems that um, he just yeah didn't switch his uh, his timing right at this moment uh, we can do something like this that doesn't actually work Wasn't it control? Hang on. A preview. F here forward was numpad dots. Okay. Um. Okay, so we can just click it here. Let's see where we actually make the chord change. There's a chord change, but there should be one around the 20 second mark. It's right here. Well, I don't know where I was exactly, but... It's 17 seconds, actually. So, at 17 seconds, he has the chord change that should be at 16, so that's correct. And then we have one around 20. That's right here. Um, actually, yeah, we can't see where we are. That's the main problem. I think it's a 21, but... I don't know. Uh, it seems that it's not correct, but there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I have to assume that um, this is the one. I, I just hear that something is off. But, well, something is off between what I hear and what I see. Yeah, well... It, it, 25 is correct again, so I'm assuming there's just, yeah, 
something weird going on around the 20 second mark. It's all good. Um, we're going to, I guess, make one more step. I don't know what I can still do. We can, for example, make a rainbow, something like that. Yeah, let's make a rainbow. I don't think I've ever made a rainbow yet. It's, uh, it's relatively easy. Uh, we are going to make uh, just an ellipse. It's going to be a big ellipse. Oh, let's, um, let's not do shape layers. It becomes kind of messy in a shape layer. Everything becomes messy in a shape layer. We're going to start by bringing home the purplish something. Actually, it should be more like this. And we're going to make this into, well, as I said, an ellipse. Um, let's, uh, oh, come on. Yeah. It says really lagging quite a lot. So I'm going to make an approximate size and then reset the, or redo the position here. And obviously we need to fix the rest afterwards. So I'm going to uh, afterwards solo this so that it doesn't lag as much. Because currently I'm having some issues with, uh, well, my computer saying, well, yeah, I've done enough for now. Screw you. Come on. Uh, so just this one would be great. Let's position it over here. Oh, this is so annoying. So yeah, that is okay. And now this one needs to go over here. And the last one doesn't matter. So I'm going to solo it now, which is this little round thing. And it gives you, well, you can see what it does. So the position, we're going to have to put it back into its old position and then move the mask. So let's just put it to 640. Go from mask, mask path, and just drag that to the right, holding shift and then putting it over there. So um, yeah, then you just drag this out until you have the correct size. Uh, so until you have the, the shape that you want, basically. Okay, now that we have this, uh, we can actually just duplicate this mask because this is going to be the, yeah, this is probably not going to be the inner ring. So let's just make it another color. Um, Probably red straight up. Yeah, I'm just going to use the full colors and then make it something else later. So just duplicate, go to mask, uh, go to the expansion, set the expansion to something like minus 10. And then you go to uh, solid settings, where we once again just add the new color, so orange in this case. There you go, orange it is. So minus 10, apparently not nearly enough. So go to the expansion, minus 50. That's a little bit too much, I think. I don't think I can, uh, I can keep that up. Now this one, by the way, needs to go all the way down, like over there. Because it, uh, I'm, I'm going to, well, make the mask smaller and smaller, and otherwise I get into trouble. So just duplicate this. We have minus 40 now, which means that for this one it has to be minus 80. So it's as easy as that. Then just change the color to yellow. Solid settings, color, yellow. There you go. So from yellow we go to green, duplicate, mask, minus 120. And we change the solid settings to, we can do some violent green. Yeah, that's fine. And yeah, once again, just duplicate. It's, it's 
pretty easy to understand what's going on. I'm just building layer on layer on layer. And even though I have a custom mask, it still works perfectly to just use the expansion the way we always use it. Uh, layer, solid settings, blue. And then we duplicate this one more time and we're going to make it into this. Well, let's make it actual purple. And obviously, expansion minus 200. So that's your rainbow. Now um, all we need to do is just pick up the entire rainbow, layer precompose, make it the rainbow, there you go, and then um, we can unsolo it. And you can see what it does. But now we're going to put a mask on it, and we're going to subtract what we don't need. I have no clue what I just did. I clicked somewhere wrong. Hmm. This is weird. Let's see if we can uh, just make this work. I have no clue what I just did, but there you go. I have no clue what I did. It doesn't matter though. We're going to select the rectangle tool with the rainbow layer selected and we're just going to go over here. Cut it off. It's not actually necessary, I just realized. Just makes it a little bit uh, better. But yeah, uh, you can of course put it exactly on the horizon, which is what we're going to do. You can also cut it off just the way I just did it. And this is going to be below everything else, but in front of the background. Um, yeah, the way I want to do this is, um, yeah, oh, you can you can put the rainbow on the background, by the way, or you can put it like I did now. Uh, I'm going to take the rainbow mask, select both of these dots, and then um, I'm going to go up until we are actually at the horizon. So we still need to fix at this point the, uh, well, the purple. So the purple is going to be just, well, added, we, we just add another mask to the purple one. Um, I don't know which one that is. Let's go into rainbow. Okay, um, so just open the masks, just duplicate the mask. Go to mask number two, edit or make it a subtract mask and make it minus 240. And yeah, we need to do that now for everyone. So the minus 240 mask, you should copy that to all of them. So copy and then just open all of the masks. And hopefully that'll work in one go because it do, they do tend to. Uh, well, overwrite the other mask, but it seems that this went well. So um, you can, of course, make it even different. Uh, so I'm going to just wipe it on left to right. But if you want to do one color at a time, then what you need to do is you need to uh, make this mask. Now it's minus 240 and I copied that. But for this one, it should be minus 220 or something like that. To I, I forgot, 210, I think it is. No, 200, sorry. Yeah, there's 40 between each one. So make it uh, minus two, uh, 200 for this one, minus 160 and so on. So that you get separate colors and then you can wipe on the colors one at a time. We are going to, however, go to the, uh, well, this one. And we're going to add a radial wipe to this. I'm pretty sure I'm not in the center, but we'll see that soon enough. So transition complete. Yeah, you can see that um, I'm starting in the top here and I'm not aligned to anything because it's wiping from here where it should wipe from here. So uh, we're going to just have to address that. Just hit A for anchor point. Put the anchor point oh, to the bottom, which is exactly right there. 
And then move the entire thing with the position to its original position. And that should solve it. So I'm going to make sure that there's no green between this and uh, yeah. Well, that's the way I like it. So um, yeah, let's try again. Obviously it needs to redraw. But now, yeah. Oh. Oh, it still seems to use another point. Apparently it has its own wipe center. I did not know that. I'm sorry, you don't have to address that. First thing, you have to just do this, the, the wipe center. It's, it's all there is to it. Anyhow, we want to, of course, oh, we want to, of course, set the uh, starting angle somewhere else. So let's see. I'm going to wipe a little bit and then uh, change the start angle until it actually matches this. So as you can see, it is now close at least to uh, where I want it to be. Just going to really slowly get there. There you go. Now I'm going to set it to z to 100% and then make it go the other way. And then hopefully that will work. Nope, it does not work. So at 50%, uh, it's over here. And I don't know why it didn't wipe the other way. Oh, it does. Yeah. So if you wipe it on, we will now go to from 0 to 50%. And that looks like that. So awesome. Let's, um, let's put the transition complete on our... Uh, well, thing to do. I, I can't find my thing. Oh, it's at zero. Okay. So, um, transition complete at 50% when it's done, but currently we want to be at 100% because then it's disappeared. And then we're going to hit U, go four seconds on, I think. So it's either one second or four seconds. You don't really have any other options. Of course, here it would be nice to wipe them on one color at a time, or partial colors. But yeah, that's all good. 50% and now we need to move it forward. Because obviously we need to put that where we left. And I kind of forgot where that is. So currently we have all the leaves already on the tree. But it's somewhere over here where that stops. So probably at 20 seconds. Between 19 and 20 still things are happening. Oh, here still th things are still happening. Um, I can actually see that, right? Yeah, so at 21, that's where it stops. So put this at 21. And we have four more seconds. Awesome. So from this point onwards, we're now at 25 seconds. I'm going to call it quits, but you can, of course, animate longer. But yeah, you can see that animating based on music is not really well demonstrated in this example because the music sample wasn't that good. And um, yeah, I went for a nat nature kind of, well, natural look. And you want, of course, to have a little bit more of a, well, abstract look for this. So I'll try again next time and hopefully fill less. I'm going to make the rainbow semi-see-through so it's, uh, the, the tree stays alive a little bit more. 30%. We can actually do this as well. So like make this into a opacity thing. So it starts off at let's say 10% and it ends at 50 or so. Maybe that's a nice effect. I don't know. I'm going to see now. The 50% is still okay. I'm going to see now how that looks. So yeah, in the beginning it's really just very pale. And then in the end you do see the color. So yeah, I'm going to keep it like that seems fine. We can also move the sun underneath it. Yeah, that seems right. I don't know, the sun seems to do well on top and on the bottom. I, I guess I'll keep it here. 
Nah, I don't know. I'll keep it here. It looks better. Anyhow, that's it for now. I hope you learned something today. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time.